Welcome everybody to the Ram 1500 Laramie. This 2020 model is one of the mid-spec models for this latest generation of Ram, but it is loaded with pretty much every single option box ticks. Now, I'm not really going to address what this thing is like in comparison to its previous generation, all the changes that came along, as I think I did a pretty good job in an in-depth view of this truck when I first tested it out a couple years ago in its limited configuration so I highly suggest that if you haven't watched that video please go and watch that first it ages well I still look good in it and when it comes to the differences between the limited and the Laramie there are some important differences that I think I need to address first of all this truck is about ten thousand dollars more than that limited that I previously tested out so I'm going to type out the exact options list here for this truck just so you can see how the base price quickly inflated to the final asking price of this vehicle I'm testing but the first thing I want to address really is the accessories that come with this truck that I didn't get to previously experience in the limited so let's head round the back and talk about those important details first First of all, we have the Ram boxes here, which I know there are a lot of owners that absolutely adore these things. It's good to have on a truck like this as it gives you additional storage space without ever having to open up the bed or the cabin if you just want to access something small. And with the rest of the car, if they're locked, they're locked. And if the car's unlocked, it's unlocked as well. You're going to hear a little bit of whirring right now because every time that you actually unlock the Ram, it gets into its lowest ride height position, getting you easy access in and out of the cabin. Now, uh, as I'm here and have this thing open, I'll show off to you that you have a little yellow button on the side that has lighting up above. This is a totally waterproof space as we've had very heavy rain in the valley for the past couple days and it's still bone dry in here. You could use this space as a cooler box, for example, throw in some ice and some drinks, or if you go fishing, it would be a nice spot to keep the fish fresh. And you have a couple of drainage plugs just down below. So really it's gonna be no hassle if you need to clean out this thing. Another thing to note, if the truck is locked, you can still unlock these boxes independently. And when you go to the other side, the driver side of the Ram box, additionally with the lighting, you have a proper household plug-in on that side too. Moving over to the back, something else to show off here that wasn't available when I first tested out the Ram, but did become available on the options list somewhere during the middle of last year is the split tailgate. So if I open up on this side, you can see that we have quite an interesting feature to this Ram. Of course, you open it up this way, or down like this, and it's a perfectly normal tailgate. You can still obviously see the seam that's right here, and even though you can feel the joint if you push down on either side, I don't have any worries actually sitting and standing on this to get in and out of the bed. Why does this thing exist? Well, if you were ever in the situation where you had a very heavy item that you didn't want to lift onto the tailgate and then push into the bed. Instead, you have it to open up and you have much less of a distance to get it into the bed. Now to wrap up some of the accessories, I'll say that this tonneau cover is incredibly easy to take apart or install or fold up and hide away in your garage. Uh, it's got a couple straps so it will stay together and uh, hold up over time while some might just flop and really just cause a bit of a mess. Otherwise, I think I've addressed everything that needs to be addressed with some of these options. Let's now get inside and go for a drive because I think the interior is really where you're going to notice the price differences and how things are specced between the Laramie and the Limited. And then I'll wrap up by talking a little bit more about the e-talk system and how this truck drives. Let's start off talking about the differences that I've noticed with the Laramie's interior versus the Limited. 
first of all, the color combination is different. We've got this lovely light brown and cream interior. There's suede inserts here on the door cards and on the seats, and Ram didn't cheap out either. All of those wonderful materials find their way into the back seats as well. Now with these materials, there's still some things that need to be pointed out. There's lots of hard plastics down below. That's not a surprise. There's still fake wood in here, which, eh, yeah, fine, I guess. If you want real wood, you have to go with a European brand. But I've noticed that the biggest problems I have with this interior are the graininess of the faux leather. You'll see that all across the dashboard and here on the center console, it gives the impression that it is leather, but it isn't. And in the Limited, it had that beautiful, flat, smooth leather of what you'd see on like a BMW X5, that leather dashboard. It looked fantastic. Here, it isn't the case. And given how much more expensive this Laramie optioned up is over the Limited, I think that's a little bit of a shame. Another element to that, where you look at the plastic leather here on the center console, you'll see that the Ram logo has been embossed into this plastic and it feels the same way that you'd see like a logo pressed into a backpack or a cheap suitcase. Again, I think the Limited does the overall interior space better. Uh, does it turn me off of the interior? No, I just know that if I wanted a higher quality leather, it's available on a higher trim. Carrying on with some of those differences and the differences between the Laramie, the Longhorn, and the Limited, if you look at your center cluster with the digital screen and the dials, you'll see that going from each different trim varies how they look. So this one, very simple, very dignified, just some silver rings around your speedo, tag, fuel gauge, and your temperature gauge. And then you'll see that with the backdrop of the center display, it's got this brushed metal look and some subtle coloring for your speedo and all of the other text that you come across. In the Limited, there's a blue undertone everywhere. And in the Longhorn, it gets more of the cowboy inspired look again what you're looking for in these different interiors when you're shopping for your perfect RAM, there's certainly options that you can play with. In this center console area where you have an abundance of space, not only do you have the place that you could probably put like a motorcycle crash helmet in here, but on the sides as well, you've got a little slot where you could slide in a newspaper or a magazine and in the door cards, plenty of more space for big bottles and even more stuff. But here, this centerpiece that slides backwards and forwards. In the Limited, it was covered. You had to push down to get access to your cup holders and this little storage space with these coin slots. And with all of the interior color schemes and the materials used, it's probably gonna come down to your personal tastes first. And no matter how you spec one of these vehicles, I think it's absolutely fantastic. There's no squeaks or rattles. The build quality is fantastic, all very sturdy. Let's now talk about how this thing drives because when I tested out the previous Ram, it had the V8 and that was it. E-Torque was available at the time, but not with that specific vehicle. And here with me today, I have that E-Torque system. I've already tried out this system on the V6 Jeep Wrangler and talked about how it worked there and the concept and how the technology is used in between those two different vehicles and the V6 that you can get with this Ram and the four cylinder with the Jeep Wrangler is the exact same idea. It's just the components are slightly different. So with this V8, we have 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque but that little electric motor that is sandwiched in between the engine and the transmission produces 130 pound-feet of torque. And the greatest benefit to this system is thinking of it as a next generation to stop-start systems. So in a lot of larger engine vehicles, you'll feel that shudder as the engine turns off and restarts, sometimes even restarting, it will give too much of a violent jolt. I know some of the bigger engine BMWs of the past 
really felt that way. With this system, getting off of the line, restarting the engine is a lot smoother. That additional torque really helps out so you aren't laboring on the engine lower down in its rev range or if it hasn't even started yet. Another benefit is if you've got your foot planted and gaining speed, that electric motor can torque fill in between the spaces of when the transmission is moving up the next gear. So you get this consistent, lovely and smooth flow as you continue to gain more and more speed. It's a system that costs an additional thousand dollars on top of the V8 and Yes, you do have some fuel economy benefits to it as this 48 volt mild hybrid system is alleviating some of the stress that the engine has to create to power up the electronics, the air conditioning, some of the things that just create a few additional losses of power generation for the engine. The 48 volt system takes care of that. Additionally, with the V8, it comes standard with the cylinder deactivation. So at highway speeds, you will have a four cylinder V8 if you don't need all that much power attached to it. So if you have the additional thousand dollars to spend, I do recommend you going for the e-torque. If you're someone that doesn't really care for automatic stop-start systems, this system is good enough to potentially change your mind. And so that concludes all the thoughts that I have towards this truck. I really do enjoy every experience that I have getting behind the wheel of one of these things. So let's park back up and finish this video. And so that concludes all of my thoughts towards the 2020 Ram 1500 Laramie. So what have you learned in this video or what I hope you've learned in this video is that you should be very careful with the options list when specking out one of these trucks. Really compare what standard equipment comes in each trim and really what you want and what you need out of one of these vehicles. Again, just like as I mentioned in my previous testing of this truck, I think it really is close to flawless this wouldn't be the spec i would go for obviously but if you're going to end up in this truck i am confident that you are going to be very happy with it so that's been everything for me thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video please like the video if you liked it share it if you think other people will like it too and if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button that does the world for me thanks again hope to see you on the channel again soon